Hey folks, Stephen here, the Green Effect Podcast Season 4, Episode 8, <laughs> live on the air. Uh, we, got some, we had a lot of stuff to talk about this week. Uh, it, it's funny because last week was just, and I'll talk about this in a moment, was very, very busy, all right? And I think I said this the last time. In fact, it was so busy, I didn't even get a podcast out last week, all right? This has been two weeks now since I've done one. And I'll talk about that reason in a moment, because it, it, it feels, I said this to someone this week, it almost feels like it's 2000, 2021 again, with with volumes and firm offers and stuff like that. So anyway, a lot of stuff to talk about. There, there, was, there was a couple of really critical announcements towards the end of last week, and we got to talk about it, because they could be... They could be very big game changer, changers, maybe, um, but I think they will be. Anyway, let's first start uh, to talk about what's going on in the market right now. So, the uh, like I said, it feels like 2021 all over again. And I have taken in, I think this week I took in about, I want to say six or seven offers. Okay, from pre-approved clients, etc. These are just purchases. We're not even talking refis. All right. Of those, I think it was, uh, it was six, and of those, only one had conditions. All right, only one had conditions. So we're now back to talking about going firm. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, when we use the term going firm. Uh, it is, you're submitting an offer on a home and it has no condition of financing, no condition of home inspection, no condition of anything. You are entering into a legal binding contract uh, unconditionally, okay? So I've actually gotten to the point now where, you know, I, I think I'm torn because I think especially if you're a first-time home buyer, that's the only way, right now anyway, that you're going to get into a home. We've got properties going 30, I think one had 27 offers, close to, like, it, it's insane how many offers. So if I'm a first-time home buyer, it, it's, again, it's kind of sad how our conversations go, where it starts with the really exciting pre-approval conversation, and we talk about going firm and they're like, oh, I would never do that. That's too much risk. Because I explained to them what could possibly happen uh, if you go firm and, and things go sideways. And then it, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. Within, I, I'd say once they lose about six or seven offers with conditions, then they start to say, okay, we got to look at this whole firm thing. Okay. And, and oh, man, I, it's tough, right? And I mean, it, right now we have such a shortage of inventory, okay, where we do, we have too many people. Now, this is going to completely, is a perfect segue to what I'm going to talk about shortly around the uh, immigration minister making very big changes. Again, I, I think they're going to make a big change. I'll talk about it in a moment, but this is kind of what we're seeing now. So we're right back to multiple offers on homes and asking prices are, are simply marketing numbers. That's all they are. Like they're not anything else other than that. So that's what's happening in the market. At the same time, we do have fixed rates slowly declining or lenders offering um, really good discounts on fixed rates, right? So we're starting to see that. And I know like with our brokerage, our brokerage is, is pretty big, um, it's just based on volumes, not a lot of people, but big on volumes. Uh, we're, we're pretty lucky, right? Where we're, we're able to, try to get our clients super competitive rates. So we're seeing a lot of that right now. So that's what's happening in the market. If you are selling a home or you're thinking of selling, man, now is a good time to get a hold of your realtor. Um, or if you need a realtor, uh, let me know. We've got some amazing ones in our roster that seriously know what they're doing and they'll do some great work for you. So if you're a first time home buyer, uh, my advice to you, or even a repeat home buyer, actually, if you got to buy a house, make sure your mortgage agent understands the difference between a pre-approval and an actual approval and, under and, and, and can appreciate and help you make a choice. You, because don't forget, it, it's not 
it's not up to the mortgage agent. It's not up to the real, it's not up to anybody other than you to go firm on an offer, um, making sure you have all the information and really your risk level is assessed, whether or not your choice is a low risk, medium risk, or high risk. If these conversations are not happening with your mortgage agent and your realtor working together, you got to consider who you're using. Seriously, I, you, I've been through this before. You got to have that info in front of you. So there's your market update, super competitive, a much, much busier <laughs> to the point where I'm falling a little bit behind, but not with my clients, but just with stuff like podcasts and whatever. So um, having said that, let me grab some water here. I do want to mention, um, I, I put in the title of the podcast, Shameless Plugs. So there's a couple of, and we'll get into uh, Immigration Minister and OSFI. Those guys have reared their ugly head again. Um, I want to just quickly talk about some cool projects that we're working on, because I think the people who listen to this podcast, uh, this is something that may either help you, or if you know somebody who's in these situations, uh, that you can definitely let them know that there's some great programs out there right now. So the one thing we've got going on, and it's a biggie, uh, yeah, with all these surgeries that I started and, and got canceled on, and then I canceled, I've been delaying this thing that's completely ready to go. Uh, we have TFC as in the Financial Collective, TFC Mortgage Premier. So if you go to TFC MP, so TFC M is in Mortgage, P is in Premier, uh, .ca, all my domains are Premier .ca, keeping up with the Canada A. This program is probably one of the biggest gaps right now in uh, the mortgage industry. It is a complete planning program. Okay, so if you have one mortgage, two mortgage, five mortgages coming up for renewal. If you even have one to five mortgages, it doesn't matter, okay? You got to get at me and into this program. We actually will put all your mortgages on a spreadsheet, all the details. Instead of you fighting for um, you know, mortgage statements and where's this and where's that, we actually put all that stuff in one spot. And then we give through interviews with you determining needs, wants, goals, et cetera. We do have a, a report, right? Here's the report. Here's what your current state is. Here's what your goals are. Here's what you need to do. So TFC Mortgage Premier is outstanding. It's for everybody. If you want more information, tfcmp.ca. There's a spot there to book a meeting. Let's talk. It's free. It's free. Like, it's pretty cool. All right. Got a couple of clients go through it and they loved it. You guys walk away with a report for free and an action plan. Pretty cool stuff. Other than that, we're coming out with, uh, it's just being finished up right now, actually. We are going to have, I know this sounds like kind of lame. It's like, really? You didn't have that already? But blow your mind. There's no client portals for people. All right. We have a full client portal coming. All your information will be in there. If you're a TFC MP client, TFC Mortgage Premier, Details will be in there, but you're going to have a one-stop shop login for our client portal. Now, are you ready for the domain of this client portal? Mortgagelounge.ca. Mortgagelounge.ca. My wife and I were at a um, at the, the Darcy and Jer comedy. If you look them up on TikTok, they're awesome. We were at their comedy uh, night on Tuesday, and we're waiting for the show to start. And I'm like, what would be a good name? We come up with mortgagelounge.ca, complete client portal, former clients, former clients will get access once it's revealed, once it's opened, um, and then new clients will get access as well. So that's that. Finally, if you are a real estate agent, guys, guys, real estate agents, hello, you need a boost to your business. We're here for you. Oh, really quick, premierpartner.ca. I am, okay, I am, I'm just going to tell you right now. I am a uh, website domain name hoarder, okay? I love it. We talk about business on this podcast. I'm from a business perspective. I have our main website and all these domains feed into our website, okay? So if you guys think I've got like a thousand websites, that's not it. They're just like these 40 ones into our website, okay? There's a business tip here on the Green Effect podcast. So premierpartner.ca. Uh, these are only for our premier partners, okay? If uh, if you want to be part of this, there's actually a link right on the website to email me and we can talk, uh, but it is a pretty slamming website, if I do say so myself, okay? So if you're a realtor and you're not, and, and you don't have either a mortgage agent you're working with, 
or your mortgage agent is like not nowhere to be found, doesn't help your business, just doesn't do a good job, I know a guy and go to premierpartner.ca. All right. So just anyway, anyone who, anyone who listens to our podcast, we got some exciting stuff coming. So make sure you, uh, you check that out. All right. Let's get into the big announcement that came out uh, from the immigration minister. Now, this should shock nobody. And, and I'm probably going to talk a little slower through this session because there's a lot of numbers I want to make sure I capture as accurately as possible. Because there's, there's a lot of understanding behind what's going on. Now, first and foremost, we have an election coming up. So let's just not lose track of this, okay? It is the, it, and I'm not, I don't care liberal PC. I'm not saying don't vote liberal. I'm not going there. All I'm saying is it is a liberal MO to bring a lot of stuff to the table before an election. Kathleen Wynne did it, didn't go too well. JT be doing it, which I firmly believe will be Kathleen Wynne 2.0. For those of you who don't know, Kathleen Wynne was the Ontario Liberal Premier, I think, for two terms. I might be wrong, but at least one. Just enough to do some damage there. But um, she, I think she, I don't even think she has, I don't think the Liberal Party in Ontario even has a official party status. I might be wrong. Please fact check me on that one. But uh, it didn't go well. I don't think she even won her own riding. Again, fact check me on that one. But so we're coming up to an election, okay? The Fed, the, the liberals, they ain't doing too well in the polls, to put it mildly, right? Them and their buddies, the NDP, they're 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 the last two picks right now uh, for the uh, Saturday shinny game. Okay, may not they be that bad, but let's just relate to hockey. Everyone else can relate to that. So what we're basically seeing right now, or, or what the announcement was, I should back up. And I just want to get this verbatim, because whatever. Mark Miller, okay, immigration minister. And I'm just going to read this right off the thing so I don't mess it up. Has announced Canada will slow permanent residence over the next three years. Yeah, it's funny. Slow, okay, so this, this where I'm reading this might not be completely accurate because it's an oxymoron. I'm actually going to paraphrase this. Over the next three years, temporary residents will be targeted at 5% of the population. Currently, this segment represents about 6.2% of the country's population. That's a reduction of nearly 20%. So here's the reality. Let's back up to, I don't know, a month ago when he said we're reducing the number of temporary uh, of, of student visas. Like, I can't remember what it was, but it's a lot. Like, there might be universities, not universities, there might be colleges that will actually probably contribute to the unemployment numbers. Conestoga is one of them. I posted about this. Conestoga is off the charts with international students. Don't forget, they pay a lot of money. Conestoga, as an example, I think they've got 30,000. Guys, again, fact check me. I'm not 100% sure, but they got like 30,000 students, and most of them are, are international, and no real housing to put them, which is why, to bring this a little full circle, they re they're reducing this number. There's no housing <laughs> for student in, in particular, international students. There's a problem in Brampton right now where you've got 10 kids to a room. Like, it's insane, okay? And it's mainly from these student visas, all right? So they're temporary students, whatever you call them. So that was, a, that was about a month ago or something like that. Now we're going a step further. And we're going to reduce temporary residents. Now, you got to understand how these numbers work. I'm going to break this down a little bit, okay? Those of you watching on YouTube, you're going to see my head kind of swivel. I've got multiple monitors, like I'm landing, landing friggin' airplanes. So components of annual population growth. So as you guys know, we hear numbers of like 1.2, 1.3 million people, okay, that we're growing by. A really tiny, probably tens of thousands it's just natural increase, birth, mainly birth, okay? Then your next highest is your permanent residence. And they're about 
455-ish range over the last few years. Because the last few years is where all the spikes and jumps have been, okay? So permanent residence over the last few years has taken, has more than doubled, right? To, to around the 450 and change. But the big one that's really skyrocketed in the last 24 to 36 months is net non net non permanent residents, and the, that's over eight hundred thousand, and that's what contributes to these humongous numbers. All right. The problem is, we're only building two hundred and fifty thousand homes in the country. Now, let's look at this number: two hundred fifty thousand across the country. We all know our population across provinces is not equal. Okay, and, and neither is housing. You're not building the same number of houses in Saskatchewan and Manitoba that you are relative to Southwestern Ontario. Southwestern Ontario and the GTA. Arguably, and I don't have this stat, but that's where the most people are, are immigrating to, because as I've said before, that's where their that's where their previous generations of family have immigrated to, right? Southwestern Ontario, GTA. So this is why we have this humongous problem in Southwestern Ontario GTA, where we don't have enough room at the inn at all. If you remember the stat I released, that scary stat for every 25 population growth, number of people, but we grew by population. We are building one house. Holy crap. Do the math. Tell me how that does how, Tell me how that's going to work. So when he's talking about reducing this by 20%, that is significant. And that's over X number, over a few years. All right. And he actually in, indicated his words, the cap is, to, is needed to ensure, quote, sustainable growth of the country's economy because it's just not sustainable. Okay. So what does this actually mean? Now, we already know we've got reduced applications. People are like, it's not that good over there, okay? I believe uh, back December, January, the numbers are way down. Just even apply to come here, right? But what's going to probably happen is we're going to have to see people leave to make these numbers work. Because some of these permanent res these non-permanent residents, they're going to become permanent residents in a lot of cases. But really to get to that number, to you have to not only stop, but you might have to like contract like you. Hi, sorry. Student visa, go home. Permanent resident, go home. I don't know how that works, but really to get that number, you got to almost contract. Now, if, and I want, there's one stat here I want to look at just through some of my, um, some of my research and, and then some of the, some of the research that I follow. Okay. Population growth could slow from 3.2, which is where it is right now, 3.2%. Because remember, these numbers are divided by our pop population growth, okay? So for bringing in, let me just make sure I got this math right. Those of you who follow the show, you can hear my calculator. So uh, 1.2 million, I hope I have zeros. Yeah, so... If you go, for example, 1.2 million, and I'm rounding here, 1.2 million divided by 40 million people who live here, that's 3% increase. So if we're going to drop, let's say we drop, um, drop, contract, let's say we get down to like 900, 9, 9 million, sorry, uh, 900,000. Too many zeros here, man. Like I'm calculating GTA house prices. And then let's say it goes up to 41 million, because now we're growing. We're still growing. We're now we're down to a 2.1% increase. If you do it one more year, we could be down to one and change. So we might have a significant decrease in population growth. We could see as low as 0.7% annually. So what what does this mean? What does, we gotta talk about what this means. I put out a stat, and I'm just going to reiterate it right now. There's a direct correlation to rental increases and non-permanent residents. Since 20, 2020, with the spike in non-permanent residents, 
I swear, the graph shows the line for rent increases almost mimicked it. And actually over time, the number of net uh, of non non permanent resident growth pretty much copies or the other way around the rental increase copies non permanent resident growth. So if we have decreases now, does rent come down? Because rents, rents, rent is stupid high. Like d d d supply and demand, friends. You did need to go to university to understand supply and demand, okay? Or college or high school. <laughs> uh, so less people coming in, less population growth, less rental income increase. I don't think we'll see like a, a 50% drop in house prices because we're so far behind. It's probably going to take my guess a few years, if not more, for prices to really kind of stabilize a little bit and get back to a regular number. You also have to remember, again, what does this mean on the topic of what does this mean? Arguably, this crazy number of population growth is artificially probably or not artificially but probably is increasing inflation think about that for a second more people more spending money more rent increases going up if they can afford a home now we've got higher mortgage payments in the system because a lot a lot of a lot of new canadians don't have enough money for 20 percent down which means their payments are higher lower down payments, lower amortization, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So on the topic of what this means, right? Lower, hopefully lower inflation, more places for people to live. The streets are not the answer for some, from, for some new Canadians. This, could, this is aggressive, well overdue. Um, and you know what? It's needed. It's needed, period, end of story. All right, that's the big news. The other big news, OSFI, Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, your teenage babysitter over the banks, and the banks are the kids, is apparently back from vacation. A few years they've been on vacation now. If I can just find the, the article. Oh, it's on a different screen. Of course, why wouldn't it be on the same screen? There it is. All right. All right. So this, this has been talked about for a while, and this could be a thing. Let me come back to that. This could be a thing. OSFI announces a cap on indebted borrowers. So I'm just going to read it verbatim. The, off, the OSFI has told lenders they will have a limit. They will have to limit the number of mortgages that exceed four and a half times the borrowers, borrower's annual income. So what they're going to look at here, and is this an issue right now, possibly, where, you know, let's say you make $100,000, way oversimplified, that means you're only allowed to have a mortgage of 450000 Now, I don't know if that means all debt, probably, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but, that, but that's the number they're proposing. Now, a ton of questions. This just got dropped Friday, but we got to follow this. And we're probably about another year or so away from this coming into play. You know, if you make a hundred grand, guys, just saying you can't afford a 450 mortgage anyway. I'm just saying, if you, if you make a hundred, if you make six figures, are you ready for this? You can only afford about 350, 400 anyway. This is not even an issue right now. Think about that for a second. You know what these guys are preparing for? And I should say, the reason why you can't afford any more anyway, is you got qualifying rates at 7%, right? If you're doing a five-year fixed, making up some numbers, 499, well, you're qualifying at 7%. That's all you can afford anyway. This is a non-issue probably right now. Where this is going to become an issue is when rates start to drop. So buckos here over at OSFI, they're prepping for when rates come down. Because what happens is now all of a sudden, 100 grand, well, yeah, you can afford based on rates, right? If we get back to the real qualifying rate, the benchmark qualifying rate, a five and a quarter, well, 100 grand, yeah, you can probably afford 
maybe four fifty five hundred. I haven't done that math in three years, but I think that's what it used to be, right? So we had people that were buying homes seven, eight times their income because the rate was one point nothing percent. And then you had programs where they would qualify you at the contract rate, whatever. But this is future planning. They're future proofing. So I kind of give them a little bit of credit. Now, what we got to find out from them is how much, what is actually going to be included? Because if they're not saying no, they're saying the banks are going to have to have a limit as to how many times they grant an exception over this four and a half times your income. What the, the way the lenders work, they have compliance reporting. OSFI knows everything. Every time a total debt servicing TDS exception is granted, which means the application's over guideline and the bank gave it a check mark saying, no problem, we're still going to do it. Anytime that happens, reporting goes up the flagpole. What ends up happening is they're going to track this. You're only allowed to do this many. So, what the banks are probably going to do is going to say, great. We're going to save this for the most part for our high net worth programs, equity programs, maybe our stated income self-employed programs, because those ones are the ones we're already doing it for. Anyway, you can be a high net worth client with uh, a large amount of liquid assets and your TDS can be up to 500 because whatever, you, it's an equity program, which means you have equity to back your debt. Where it's going to be interesting is when rates start to drop, what's going to happen when, you know, Tommy and Susie want to be 4.75% over their income with 20% down because the rates are lower. And they're finally, after three or four years of waiting, they're finally getting in the market. Is the bank going to say no? Sorry, over quota. I don't think so. It, it's, it's a much bigger picture than that. But that's what we need to really envision here. Okay. So again, OSFI doing some future planning here, future proofing uh, with this 4.5% or sorry, 4.5 times your income going forward. All right. That's it, man. Big stuff this week, man. Big stuff. Thank goodness. Cause it was, a, it was, a, I didn't do a podcast last week. So uh, we had some pretty big news that we had to talk about. I didn't even talk about inflation, but whatever. Follow me on social media. I got stuff on there about my about inflation. Okay. All right. We're going to stop it there. Uh, as you guys know, like me, love me, follow me, desire me, want me, five stars, blah, blah, blah. Keep fit. Have fun. See ya. I might not see you next week. It's Easter. Uh, I, I'm going to plan to do a podcast. If not, catch you in two weeks, but look for it anyway. Talk to you soon.